Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so happy to see you all here. Uh, so in this video, I want to continue the discussion we were having in the previous video where we talked about um, performing cell type annotation using single R. And in that video, I talked about various annotation tools and single R being one of them. We spoke about how single R works. And I also demonstrated how to annotate um, a single cell RNA sequencing data set using one reference um, data set. Uh, in this video, I want to continue that discussion, but I want to talk about the approaches um, to use multiple reference data set to um, which can be used to perform um, cell type annotation and talk about various strategies and their strengths and pitfalls. And lastly, I also want to demonstrate how to perform um, cell type annotation with multiple reference data set and demonstrate each of those strategies. So the authors of the single R package recommends three strategies one can use um, to perform um, cell type annotation using multiple references. So talking about the first strategy, um, it involves using reference specific labels in a combined reference. So when we say combined reference, we don't mean um, references uh, where the labels are harmonized. We just mean combining both the separate references, which involves uh, combining um, the expression matrix and also labeling or considering each label in context of its reference data set. So to give you an example, let's say we have reference X and reference Y and both the references have B cells. So the B cells from re reference X will be considered to be different or a separate entity um, compared to the B cells in a reference data set Y. This strategy is useful when um, the difference between both your reference data set is important. So to give you uh, further intuition, let's say reference data set X is derived from healthy uh, patients or healthy tissues and reference data set Y is derived from a tumor patient or, a, or from tumor tissues. Um, this can this such combination or com combination of reference data sets can be used to annotate data sets uh, where your uh, query data set can contain both the healthy and the uh, disease. Um, cells. Um, the problem that is inherent to this approach is that there is no way to easily distinguish between um, uninteresting batch effects uh, and genuine biological differences uh, between your um, reference data sets. The next strategy involves combining scores across multiple references and this involves performing classification separately with each reference and then combining the results to choose the label with the highest score across the references. Uh, the biggest advantage of this method is that it takes care of the reference specific batch effects. So this method is a default method which is implemented in single R. So when single R is provided with multiple references, uh, the function first annotates the test data set with each reference individually. So this step is almost um, equivalent to uh, looping over uh, individual references and running single R on each. So basically comparing the test data set with each individual uh, references uh, one on one. And for each cell, the function collects its predicted labels across all the references. And in doing so, it identifies um, the union of markers that are upregulated in the predicted labels across uh, all the references. So it involves recomputation of the scores um, across the identified marker subset across uh, all these labels from different references. Uh, so basically, it is ensuring that these scores are derived from the same set of genes. So lastly, the function identifies the overall best scoring label uh, as the final prediction for that cell. The biggest uh, advantage of this approach lies in the fact that um, the test data set is compared and uh, annotated with each individual references, uh, which avoids the batch effects from comparing the expression values across the references. Um, they also provide the per uh, reference annotation in the results and this is specifically helpful as it allows for more detailed diagnostics and troubleshooting and further analysis. A major challenge with this strategy is the lack of consistency in labels across uh, multiple references and this will make more sense when I'm demonstrating annotating single cells using this strategy. So to somewhat address this problem, strategy three involves using harmonized labels. So basically using standardized vocabulary or cell ontology terms uh, to which basically refer to the same cell across uh, in, which have the same terminology for the same cell across different ref diverse um, data sets. So the key idea here is that the same term is used for the same conceptual cell type in each reference. 
and basically providing these standardized vocabulary um, to single R instead of providing um, labels while performing annotation. Uh, so basically this the results would yield annotations that follow the same vocabulary regardless of the reference used for assignment. The most obvious problem with this approach is the assumption that the harmonized labels are available, uh, which is not usually true as some manual mapping is required to map the author uh, provided labels to a common vocabulary. So we will be using the same data set that we used in the previous video. So the goal um, would be to annotate um, 20,000 peripheral blood mononuclear cells from a healthy female donor. And in this demonstration, I will be using two reference uh, data set instead of one uh, to annotate uh, these cell types. And the requirements for today are these packages. So basically, we'll be using Singular to perform cell type annotation. Celldex is a package which provides reference data set. It has a lot of uh, single cell atlas uh, data sets, which can be used as reference data sets. Um, Sirat to perform pre-processing uh, steps uh, for single cell RNA sequencing data set. Uh, Feedmap to visualize um, heat maps and tidyverse to wrangle the data. So as I said previously, um, I will be using the data set that I used in the previous video. Um, so we did perform some steps uh, in the previous video, uh, like filtering out low quality cells and performing some standard pre-processing and essentially performing clustering so that we can visualize our clusters of cells. And we did all of that in Serat. Um, so I did that in the previous video. So I'm not going to demonstrate it again here. Um, I will be adding the link to my previous video in the description section below. Uh, so here again, I have already run all of those steps here. And finally, uh, we have run a UMAP also. So I will be just showing you um, the clusters that we get from our data set. And just reiterating the goal of today's demonstration. So essentially, we want to annotate each of these cells uh, to determine their cell type um, identity. And uh, basically, in this demonstration, we'll be using uh, two reference uh, data set to perform uh, the annotation. So let us start by choosing our reference data sets. So let us choose the data set from Celldex package and save it into um, an object. So the first data set that we will be using today is human primary cell atlas data. And this essentially contains uh, publicly available microarray data sets from um, human primary cells. And most of the cell types in this data set uh, consist of blood subpopulations, but uh, uh, there are also other cell types which are also present. So let us store this in a variable called HPCA. And the next, uh, reference data set that we will be using is the database immune cell expression data. This reference uh, essentially contains um, bulk RNA sequencing samples uh, of sorted uh, immune cell uh, populations. So I'm going to save this into a variable called DICE, uh, which is the acronym for database immune cell expression data. So as we previously discussed, the first strategy involves combining uh, the references. So here um, the labels would be uh, considered in the context of the reference and each label uh, will be considered as a separate entity. So there will be um, chances that uh, the references that we are using, especially in our case where both of the references will contain immune cell types there will be a possibility that the same label could be present in both the references and in order to distinguish them from each other we need to add some information which tells us where the particular label is originating from um, so basically we will add some information about the reference into uh, these label names so let me quickly show you what the uh, label means for each of these references look like so these are the cell uh, types or the labels that are present um, in the human primary cell atlas uh, data. And these are the labels that are present in the database of immune cell expression data. So you can see that there will be some labels which will be present in both um, the references. And in order to distinguish them from each other, uh, we can simply add a string which basically tells us where the label is originating from. And let us save this back to the main labels. 
so i'm quickly going to show you how this looks like so basically for each of the label from the um, human primary cell atlas data we simply added a string which basically tells us where this label is coming from so basically these are the labels that belong to the hpca reference um, object and similarly we repeat this for the other reference as well So as you can see that we have added a string which basically um, tells us where this label um, is originating from. Now we need to create a combined reference which is based on the genes that are present in both the references. So let us create a vector that holds the shared genes between both the references and we do this by intersecting the row names in both the references. So basically this shared vector uh, holds all the genes that are common in both the references and now we need we can combine both the references by retaining uh, these genes that are uh, common to both the references so let us c bind the reference and keep only the shared genes and save this into a variable called combined So just quickly looking at this um, object. So basically we have created a new summarized experiment object which holds um, the shared genes and uh, contains the labels uh, from both the references. Let me quickly show you um, the labels that are present in the combined uh, object. So we can see that we have labels that are present from both um, the references and we can make this out by um, the string that we had pasted earlier. So that way we know that these would be the labels essentially that we will be providing single R to perform the annotation. We perform the annotation um, on our data set and we perform it on the counts data. So to get that from our filtered um, object, we use the get assay data function. Our filtered data is present in pbmc.serat.filtered object and the slot that we will be using is the count slot because it will hold the uh, raw counts. And let us save this into an object called pbmc counts. Now that we have extracted the counts, let us run single R. So the first um, parameter is the test, which is our uh, PBMC count. The reference would be combined reference that we created. And the labels that we provide is from the combined reference. And the labels that we will be providing are the label main. And let us store the output of this into a variable called combined result one. Let us check the number of cells that are assigned to each label uh, now that this has finished running. So we can see that there are various cells which are labeled uh, with um, which have been labeled from a uh, different um, references. Uh, you'll also notice that there are some cells uh, which which for, for which the highest scoring label was from one um, reference uh, and there are also some cells uh, for which the highest scoring label which is essentially the same cell type but the highest scoring label was from a different reference. Um, there is also a way to visualize this um, in a UMAP. So let us just transfer all these labels and save it into a metadata in our Serat object and that way we can visualize the labels in our UMAP. So I'm just simply going to match the row names which are essentially the cell IDs in the Serat object with that of the result object and 
let us get the labels from there and store it into Serat object. So quickly viewing the metadata on the Serat object. You'll see the labels have been added here to the metadata um, object here within the Serat object. And now let us use this column as labels in our UMAP. So just zooming in on the plot here. So here our cells have been annotated and the clusters uh, that form, um, the cells that form these clusters basically show the labels of these um, annotations. So there have been some cells which are essentially the same type, but uh, for these cells, the highest scoring label um, matches one, is from one uh, reference compared to the other and vice versa. Um, so essentially this combined reference approach would make more sense if we are trying to annotate a data set that would have cells that match both the references. Uh, but in this case, since we have, we are trying to annotate the blood sub, uh, the blood, uh, su cell subpopulations here, a combined reference approach would not be a very useful approach, uh, since, um, uh, we would essentially, since we essentially have the same types of cells present in both the references and what we would essentially want is some sort of harmonization across these uh, references or maybe one reference, uh, which uh, one label, which is essentially a high scoring label across the references. So let us talk about the second strategy, which basically talks about combining the scores across the references. So before setting up the query to run Stringar um, with both the references to compare score across these references, let us um, perform some manipulation to the uh, label.main, which we will essentially be providing as the labels to perform the um, annotation. So if you recall, we had previously added a string in the first strategy while we were using these references in order for us to distinguish the labels that are originating from um, each of the individual references. Uh, so now we would want to remove these strings uh, from both our um, references, these strings essentially. So let us just um, use regular expression to substitute these uh, strings first. And save it back to the label main. And let us repeat this process for our second reference. So just ensuring that we have been able to get rid of these strings. So it looks like these uh, strings are uh, not present anymore. And now we can basically provide these labels to our string our uh, query. So let us build the Stringar query here. So the first test would be the PBMC counts. The reference here would be a list of references as we are providing multiple references here. And the last um, parameter would be the labels, which again would be a list which corresponds to the order of the references we provided here. And now let us store this into an output object called combined result two and let's run this. Now that this is finished running, let us check the final label assignments and check the number of cells for each label. So we simply use the table command on the combined result to object and look at the number of cells for each of the label assignment. Now this strategy returns the best uh, scoring label as a final prediction for each cell across all the labels. 
so how could we determine which reference code the best uh, for which label so in order to find that out we can perform some operations to get that information so let us create first a grouping variable so we'll just paste the labels with the reference information and save this into a vector called grouping so essentially we will be using this vector um, to split the object or the data frame so now let us split the combined reference to with the grouping variable that we created in the previous step and let us store the output of this as a data frame into another variable called best ref so now opening this best ref um, data frame here we'll be able to see what are the labels for each of the cells and from which um, reference does it come from so basically it tells us which reference code the best uh, for that particular label for any particular cell type it is also possible to get the um, marker genes for each individual um, uh, data, uh, cell type in uh, for each reference so basically we can get that from the original result and you can go to the differential expression differentially expressed genes and this can give you the markers for each cell type from each reference similarly we can get the same information for the dice um, reference data set This information can be used for further detailed diagnostics, troubleshooting or for uh, further analysis. Lastly, let us create a heat map to visualize the scores in all individual references as well as combined or uh, recomputed scores uh, in combined references. So we uh, use the function plot score heat map, um, which I also demonstrated in the previous video. Um, where we provide it with the object, um, the output object of the single R and run this. So basically these heat map visualize the scores uh, for each um, cell, uh, cell type assignment to each uh, label. And the heat maps at the bottom basically visualizes the score um, uh, for each of the cell in individual references, while the heat map at the top uh, visualizes a score, uh, recomputed scores in the combined results. The annotation bar at the top of the, each of the heat map represents the um, final pred uh, combined prediction for each cell. Each column here is a cell and each row here is a label. And higher the score for a cell indicates higher is the confidence of that cell's assignment to a particular label. In the combined scores heat map, only the labels which are um, uh, predicted in the individual references, only for those labels, the scores are recomputed. Uh, the rest of the labels are set to NA and hence we see a high uh, proportion of gray in um, this heat map compared to these uh, the following heat maps. Since these heat maps uh, visualize um, these scores, which are the initial assignment scores or pre-tuned scores, which are stored in the matrix, uh, these heat maps serve as a useful diagnostic tool in terms of identifying um, high scoring uh, labels in association with the cell types or clusters of cells. Uh, talking about the combined score heat map here, um, it is helpful uh, to see that these, since these are um, these scores that are ultimately used to make the final prediction in terms of the cell type assignment, uh, it is uh, useful to see that um, the final assignment, uh, the cells with the final assignment has high scores for those labels, which gives us further confidence in terms of um, the assignment that has been performed with uh, this strategy. Now something to note in this strategy, so I'm going to rerun this command again. So basically these are the final label assignments after running single R. 
and on creating a table uh, on running the table command basically we are getting the number of cells which are assigned to each of these labels uh, you'll notice that um, b cells essentially are present in both the references but the way that they are um, referred to is different in each of the reference and due to that single r considers each of them as a separate label and this is essentially um, something that the strategy does not handle, which is basically the lack of consistency in these labels. Similarly, you can also see that with the NK cells. So um, this problem can be um, circumvented with using harmonized labels, which is um, some way we can use uh, standard terminology or um, standard vocabulary which uh, basically avoids these problems of um, cell labels across uh, different uh, references. So that brings me to the third strategy where uh, we will run single R using uh, harmonized labels. So we will be using cell ontology terms um, instead of uh, gene names um, in single R command in terms of in place of the labels, we will provide the ontology terms. And these ontology terms uh, refer to the same conceptual cell with using the same term across each reference. So basically the resulting annotation will result the same vocabulary regardless of which reference it is coming from. And it will take care of uh, these lack of uh, in, uh, consistencies in the label labeling of these cell types across uh, different um, uh, references. So let us retrieve uh, the reference data set and this time let us exclude the samples that could not be mapped to the ontology. So let us um, set the cell ontology to non-NA. So only the non-NA samples in terms of ontology will be retrieved. And similarly, let us repeat that same process for the other reference that we are using as well. Now let us retain the same or the shared set of genes uh, for in both the references. Let us look at the uh, 10 most frequent terms, um, the cell ontology terms in each of these um, references. So sorting the number of um, cell ontology terms in each of these references. And choosing the 10 most frequent. So these are the 10 most frequent uh, cell ontology terms in the HPCA uh, reference. Similarly, we can do the same for the other reference. And these are the 10 most frequent terms um, in the, um, the other reference. Uh, these are the cell ontology terms which are most frequent in the two references. So now let us create a single R command and provide um, these ontology terms uh, instead of labels. The first would be to provide the counts data. Next we will provide the list of references. And lastly for the labels will provide the list and the order corresponds to the reference provided. So we provide the ontology terms instead of the labels from each of the reference. And now let's save the output to this into a combined result 3 object. Now that this is finished running, I'm just going to run a table command on the output object labels 
and these labels would be the cell ontology term so basically here we get the number of cells that are assigned to each of these ontology terms now a challenge with this approach could be how to get what these ontology term mean uh, in terms of what are these cell types that these ontology terms represent so basically to map these ontology terms uh, there are a couple of ways you can go about this um, the most easiest way is to um, get the call data for each of these um, references because if you run this command you will be able to see that um, these ontology terms can be mapped to the label main or the find labels which essentially are the names of these cells that these ontology terms represent. So similarly you can get that for the other um, reference as well and simply create a data frame and add this information um, whether you want to use the main label dot main or label dot find you can add this information into the serat metadata uh, and can visualize these labels um, in a umap uh, another way could be there are these files uh, that come with the celldex package uh, which are called mapping um, these ba these are basically the TSP files, uh, which basically provide the mapping between the ontology terms and the names of the cell. So basically, this will provide you with the um, path to where this mapping file is present and you can simply read this mapping uh, file using the read.dlim command. And now quickly looking at this mapping file. Here you will be able to find the ontology term and the corresponding cell type that these ontology terms correspond to. So either you can use this method and similarly you will also find the file for um, the other data set as well. So this, this would be dice.tsv for the other uh, reference. So you could use either of the method to get the corresponding cell names, uh, cell type names for these ontology terms and add them to the serat metadata and you can use these labels to visualize um, add them as labels on the umap as well so that brings me to the end of this video i hope you found this video useful and informative i will upload my script uh, on my github repository and i will link my github repository in the description section i will also add uh, the link to my previous video that is a part one of this video in the description section as well I'm very grateful for all the thoughts, uh, feedback, comments, suggestions in the comment section. It has helped to grow this channel substantially and I'm very grateful for that. So please don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section. Like the video, share it and please don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, see you.